All right, welcome back to We Talk Tech, everybody. Today we have an exciting episode. We are uh, comparing and reviewing the SwitchBot versus the FingerBot. Yes, and Benson Al, uh, one of our technicians here at Technology for Living, he's going to join us. Benson, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm the assistive technologist here at George Pearson Center. I primarily assist residents here with all things tech related. I also try to introduce all the amazing assistive tech that we provide here at Technology for Living. It's been awesome working here, and it's rewarding to see the residents gain more independence through technology. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Benson. It's, it's great having you here for uh... Uh, for this battle royale of, of episodes, Ian's really looking forward to this one. And, and so let's just get right into it. So we've got the, the switch bot. Uh, we're going to review the finger bot. We're going to review and uh, and just full disclosure, we have played with the micro bot in the past. Uh, unfortunately, there were a lot of connection issues. So uh, that's not part of this uh, episode, but uh, maybe down the road. So let's just get right into it. Let's uh, let's uh, hear your guys' thoughts on the switch bot. Uh, Ian, you want to go first? I love the switch bot. I've been a huge fan for uh, for a couple of years now, and I think that the biggest thing is uh, it, it's the first device that I've had in my house and and that we've supplied to our members that really gives people the ability to uh, place it anywhere, whether it's on the back of a um, a computer, if it's a, a light switch, a bed control, a key fob, honestly, you name it. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, I think that. It uh, one of the pros is the the compact size and the uh, the replaceable battery. Also, the ability to uh, integrate it with uh, things like smart things. I think that's that's really important. Um, downside, I, I think that it could be a little bit smaller, and uh, and I I also wonder about reliability at times because I I do find that I'll give a command and I'll wait, and I'll wait some more, and some more, and then finally the light will turn on. So that's it. But I'm going to echo a lot of what you said, Ian, because um, because when I, when I, the things that I like about the SwitchBot is that, first of all, it's very convenient, um, and it's very easy to install for, uh, for members. You know, you just, you just take off the tape, and it, it's good to go. You tape it anywhere you want. And it works with all the rocker switches, um, it, like coffee makers, all, all the different things that you can think of. Um, and, and like you said, it's got replaceable batteries. So it's compact. It looks nice. It doesn't, uh, it fits pretty much uh, anywhere. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the, the switch bot for that. Um, and for the cons, I, I guess the, the customizability of it. So you, it, there, there are some things that I just can't, press. Um, so, I mean, it's limited in that regard, but for 95% of everything that requires a button press, the, the SwitchBot can, can do. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you too, Benson. The, the SwitchBot I found very easy to set up. Um, quite strong. The, the rotating arm is, is quite strong. Uh, it is a little bit cheaper than the FingerBot, which is a plus when you're talking about a nonprofit. And, uh, and it does come with the light switch accessory, which the FingerBot does not um, but that, that accessory is also a downside to me. I, I really don't like that they use fishing string to uh, pull the light switch back out. I think that was a little bit of an afterthought. Uh, and the other thing that I, I have found a little bit frustrating is there's a little bit of a delayed response um, when I'm activating it from my phone. Um, so let's uh, let's move on now to the FingerBot. Uh, Benson, you want to get us started on the FingerBot? Um, the FingerBot to me gives you the ultimate freedom. And I think Ian's gonna love this because it, to me, it's sort of like comparing Apple to Android. Um, Cause in a sense, the the SwitchBot is a nice compact device. It, it looks beautiful. It, it's nice and simple. It just has a little arm that sticks out. Whereas the FingerBot kind of looks like like a alien device. It, 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 it looks a, a little janky here and there but it gives you that customizability where you can take the arms out and replace it. Uh, you can 3D print different arms uh, from things like little suction cup arms or a loop modify arm or, or even a stylus arm where you can put, you know, tape onto your, um, 
uh, your tablet and constantly press that you know button if you're playing a mobile game and you really need to farm an item and you just need to press that button over and over again. So I, I like that the fingerbot gives you that customizability and um, and overall it, it, you can let your imagination run wild. Definitely, yeah, I I think you're right. It uh, it's nice that you can replace the uh, the little uh, fingers on it. I think that's a great idea, especially for a toggle switch, because that's something that the the switch bot can't currently operate. Uh, my I guess my my con for it is not being able to replace the battery. Um, so if the battery runs out and you have it mounted to a, a light switch, you'll have to physically remove it or connect a, a long USB cable to an outlet. Yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, one of the, the main things about the FingerBot is the, uh, is the arms. Um, having solid arms is nice. Uh, being able, like Benson said, to uh, to have somebody 3D print uh, other arms as we see the need down the road. Um, and uh, and it was a little bit quicker from my phone to respond than I found the SwitchBot. Uh, but one thing I don't like about the, the FingerBot is the tool pack. Uh, I love the tool pack, the, the five, five or six items that come in the tool pack, but it's not included with the FingerBot. It's an accessory that you have to buy separately, um, which makes it uh, quite a bit more expensive than the, the SwitchBot. Uh, and one other thing I don't like is the wooden blocks that come to hold the fingerbot off the wall when it's turning on the lights. Um, it's just, a, again, it seems like an afterthought and I, I don't know why they didn't uh, 3D print something or make something at least white to, uh, to match the rest of the device. All right, so now that we've re reviewed the SwitchBot and the fingerbot, uh, let's get your guys' thoughts on, on who won this battle. Ian, uh, can you get us started? Okay, so even though FingerBot is a new competitor, I think that uh, I think it's a win for me. I, I love its functionality, and I'm really sorry, SwitchBot, but yes, yeah. For right now, I love the FingerBot. I love everything it can do. That is surprising. Ian's been a, a SwitchBot supporter since the beginning. So, uh, Benson, what are your thoughts? I have to say I'm not surprised that Ian picked the FingerBot because it's more like the Android. Um, for me, I would also go with the FingerBot because to me, the FingerBot is sort of like the SwitchBot. But so the SwitchBot is 1.0. The FingerBot is more like 1.1. So it's just got that little edge over this, uh, the SwitchBot. But I do like the design of the, the SwitchBot. And, and if, you know, uh, if I want my house to look, you know, perfectly uh, modernize and everything, then I would definitely go with the SwitchBot. But if I'm if I'm trying to make it more practical and to make to make sure everything works, then the FingerBot. So FingerBot me. I think this is unanimous, guys. I, I also prefer the FingerBot, although I think there is room for both within the program. I, I think the ability to customize the FingerBot uh, for me has a win in this challenge. Thanks again, Benson. I really appreciate your input. I know that uh, you're on the cutting edge of this technology, so uh, your your vote is pretty important to us and our members. So thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Thank thanks for having me. Thank all right, that was a lot of fun having Benson on with us today. Um, we we all shared our comments on the FingerBot and SwitchBot. If you guys have uh, if you guys have comments or or have a vote as to who you think would win this comp or comparison, um, let us know. Let us know in the comments. Um, and also don't forget to join us next episode. Uh, we're going to have an, another fun episode with, uh, with one of our TIL techs and we're going to be talking routines. We're going to be talking series shortcuts. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And as always like subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos, send us an email. Thanks. All right. Take care. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go. That's me. Okay, okay. Benson, you ready? I am. <laughs> okay. And if we mess up, we can just do it again, right? Yeah, no, we'll do this like at least 50 or 60 times. Probably not, but... I'm professional. Benson, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Fingerbot. Uh, Benson, do you want to get us started on the Fingerbot? Benson, what are your thoughts? A little arm that sticks out, whereas the finger, but it kind of looks 
it's like like a alien device. It it it, it looks uh, a little janky here and there. All right. We can't see your beautiful hair though. Uh, here we give this rich bot here four pineapples and uh, <laughs> and the finger bot five mangoes. Yeah. Was that okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, perfect. He says that when he wants me to show that. <laughs> <laughs>